Hey, what's up everybody? Lucid Abstract here with another Is It Fun? And today, we're going to be playing Fortnite Save the World Co-op PvE mode. Now this mode's a little different than Royale. It's a little bit more RPG, MMO, tower defense, and an FPS third person shooter. All those mixed into one in a nice cartoony fresh wrap package just for you. So let's go ahead and take a look. So in Fortnite Save the World, we start out in Stonewood. Start out as Commander Ramirez. The tutorial will teach you how to shoot zombies, how to kill some things. It'll show you how to lay out traps, build your first kill tunnels, and then it'll send you on your way to go explore and farm stuff up. Now the basis of how these run down the levels, pretty much you go out, you farm, then you come back and you defend from zombies. Well, husks in this, but they're zombies, not husks. In each of the different little worlds you'll get your storm shield and that's pretty much your home base. It's where you build your base and you'll have to defend from different waves to raise your power level. Now within these levels you'll have a bunch of different kinds of levels that you could do. You could do encampments where you run around killing stuff and they give you like hero experience, level your hero, Ride the lightning, pretty much defend the van as, until it takes off. You got a, a couple different things to do. Rescue the survivors, you can look for desires, and you get survivor experience. Each of the different experiences level up different things. This game is very grindy. One of the downfalls, but at the same time, the same thing that keeps you playing. So, like, survivor experience will level up your survivor squads. Your survivor squads are pretty much your talent points in this. So as you level them up, they'll get stronger, and they add to your health, and your shield, and your stats. Schematic experience levels your schematics. Now your schematics are obviously your weapons, and you craft them, and instead of durability where you need to repair them, you, craft, you just use them until they're used up, and then once they're used up, you craft a new one. So what you want to be leveling with your schematic experience is whatever guns you plan to use or level with. For example, I use the seal Siege Breaker that I'm currently leveling, and I'm at level 29 to 30. Another level I'll hit 30, and I'll craft this, and I'll have a higher level gun. As you can see, the rest of my stuff here is pretty low level. I've only been playing the game for about a week now, but I have been enjoying it so far. You also get skill trees to unlock. You unlock them as you go. They give you all the different perks. They lock inventory space. They Unlock all your slots for your defenders and your squads, all the guys that give you your talent points. So you're going to want to unlock all those, that way you can get your talent points out of it. You also get research talent tree. Now this, research points, they add up over time. And you collect them and then when you collect enough you can spend them to buy a point. There are loot llamas in this, and with loot llamas, you get you know, schematics or other things. You can pretty much disenchant anything to get experience or mats. I'm full of surprises and candy. Pretty much all the upgrades and stuff that you could use in this come in here. And as you can see, there's different levels. I happen to hit a silver one this time. My loot's going to be a little bit better. Now with hero experience, you'll be leveling your heroes. You have your primary hero, which is the one you'll play as, and then your squad bonus heroes, which give you your squad bonus for support. You'll have a single one on this side, and then another one on this side for your tactical. Each of them have their own perks, which you can read, help buff whatever character you're playing. As you level your character, you'll see the different levels and the different things and perks and bonuses it'll unlock. With this one I play a ninja and as I unlock her you know you get different moves. You get your mantis sleep, you get your dragon slash. For this character dragon slash is you know a main attack. As you get higher in the next tier you get more moves, more perks that add up. Each character has their own different playability. 
Red and Ninja, you're more up in their face, slash and dice. You have Outlanders. They're more of a, like the hunter style. You know, they can summon a, a robotic bear that fights for them. They also get perks on farming. As you can see, as he unlocks things, you know, he gets perks to his damage on. Getting stuff, he's got his loot llama perk. The teddy here, that's the robot that summons. He blows the hell out of anything. And he can punch people. He also gets 6% extra chance to find double loot at, at level 12. So, I mean, these are worth leveling each kind of character. Maybe trying to get one of each that you play, so whenever you need to play whichever role you can, you have that character. Now, Constructor is more of a builder type. Their bonuses will be more, you know, faster building, quicker repairs. They also get an ability that put the base down. The base will heal the building structure over time. As you can see, she also has Plasma Pulse as her own move base will come down, make structure stronger, help them heal. As she goes on she'll get more and more moves. All of her moves will basically be centered around building and being a better builder. Now you have soldiers who are obviously better at running and shooting. Now you also have soldiers who are better at shooting and they have perks to give them range damage or uh, as you unlock them Warcry will buff your parties you know with frag grenades you get frags go in commando you pull out a minigun and just... you'll get different quests and daily quests that reward V-Bucks just gotta do whatever it says it'll reward you V-Bucks and daily coins which you can then take to your loot go to the event see what events are going on Now you get gold from each time you do anything really and the gold will add up and you can use it here you can get uh, heroes, you can get schematics whatever they have in here really you can also get things to help you perk up or upgrade your stuff, re-perk it now like with any game progression as you get stronger and you get higher level, everything will get more health, it'll get harder to fight. You'll get different things to fight. You have different fight mechanics that you have to follow to kill it. Pretty much just to stay alive. So overall, this game, to someone who likes you know, co-op zombie games or perhaps they're a casual player and competitive is maybe a little bit too much for them, they like a game where they can grind and maybe keep the materials uh, they grinded. They're gonna love this game. They're gonna love it. My ninja's too you know, and it's gonna be free soon. Uh, it's almost the end of the year when I'm making this. By the end of this year, it should be free to play. Maybe you're just see a lot more of the casuals ninja. move towards this game. Whereas if you're a person that's more into the competitive side of Royale, you're not interested in the grind and you're more of the PvPer. This game might not be for you. You might not like it. It might take a little bit too much of a grind to really get anywhere. But you also might enjoy the V-Bucks, because this game does give you a chance to farm oh, right. V-Bucks, which you can use for skins for Royale, which you can pick it up on a sale, half off, or by the time it's free to play. I don't know if you could still farm at that point, but it's, it's definitely worth the V-Bucks for the skins. Overall, I love zombie games, I love co-op games, I love playing with my friends, and this, this game has done exceedingly well with cross-platform. You can play with pretty much any system, it doesn't matter what system your friends are on, with console or PC, you guys can play together, and that's one thing that this game has done right, and is doing right, because by doing that, they're connecting all kinds of players all over the world, and anyone can play with anyone in turn giving more players more people to queue with which is faster queue times which works great for this game but on the downfall this game is very grindy sure you can spend real life money 
on llamas and, and buy your way into gear, but you're still gonna have to grind out some of your talent points. You're still gonna have to grind away to get the experience and level things up. And the tr microtransactions, in my opinion, are not worth it. You can just grind them out. If you if you want something a quicker way through it, you, they give you that option. In the end, I'd say this game rates a husky good grind. It's definitely fun, and I can see myself pouring many hours into it. I'm not max level yet, but as you can see, I've continued to grind, and I'm going to make it to the end game, see how the end game is, maybe come back and read now has a video. Who knows, maybe I'll do a few other tips and tricks videos or building tutorials or something. This has been Lucid Abstract with the Is It Fun. If you guys like these videos, tell me down below. Tell me what's up. Be like, hey, I like them. Do some more and maybe you will see more. As for now, I hope you guys have an awesome day.